Welcome back, you guys, to another amazing night with yours truly, Sylvia Camille. And I hope you had a blessed week. And I have a special treat for you tonight with our guest. But before I bring her into the room and tell you a little bit about her, you know I've got to give you a word of the week. Our word of the week, the last week in October, in September, is reset. Reset. <laughs> Are you resetting those goals? Are you resetting your mission and your journey journey in life? Reset is to set again a new reset. So I don't want to wait anymore, any longer. I'm going to bring in, I guess, Mrs. Corita Montgomery, who is known as the Reset Ability Coach. So come on into the room. Yes. Hi, Sarah. <laughs> Sarah, how are you today? It is so nice to have you this evening with us. I am, I am, I've just been watching everything that you're doing in your life and it is amazing. And I just want to take this time to first thank you for being on Sunday Night Live with Sylvia Camille. My and we're just going to jump right on into it. So just tell the good people who you are and what, what do you do other than being a mother? <laughs> okay. Well, good evening, everyone. My name is Karita Montgomery, better known as the Resetability Coach. I, like Camille said, Sylvia Camille said, I'm a mother. I'm a wife. I have a career in hospitality, 20 plus years of award winning career in hospitality. But that's what I do to earn a living. But what am I? The Resetability Coach as mm -hmm. an author. I'm a two-time published author, so we'll talk about that a little bit more, but I've been mentoring and coaching and developing minds for 20 plus years. The reset is all about change your thoughts and change the trajectory of your life, literally. So when I train people, I train people to think the way they want to live mm. your Thoughts are real. They're not just something that you just um, that that just um, that you think and nothing happens. Dr. Caroline Leaf, I don't know if you all are familiar with her, but Dr. Caroline Leaf is a neurosurgeon. Um, and if you study her, she's all over social media, YouTube, but she's also a believer. She believes in God. So she believes that science is tied into the word of God. And what she has said is that the brain literally changes when you change your thought pattern. There is a way that brain cells form when your thoughts are negative, when there are thoughts of defeat, thoughts of anger, thoughts of jealousy. Your brain looks really dark and not healthy. Mm. But when you change your thoughts, she said, literally your brain can transform in 45 to 60 days and the cells begin to look lively, healthy, almost like a live tree, like um, the branches of a tree just go out and you can see life, you can see the greenery, you can see all of that. That's what happens when you change your thoughts. So you can literally reconstruct your brain cells in 60 days. That's what I teach, the resetability effect. Um, Corinna, I want you to tell the people, how did you get into this 25 years ago? Because that's a long time mm -hmm. to try to help develop somebody's mindset. <laughs> Just to, How did you get involved in this mission in life? I sure will. It, it's always been a part of me. I My mission and purpose is to uplift, inspire, and motivate others to pursue their goals and dreams. So this is something that has been in me since I was a really young child. And as I went through college and, and started my first career, um, my fir very first job was with Enterprise Rental Car. Literally after being on the job about two months, I was chosen as a trainer. When you're training people and developing people, you have to get their mindset together. So I started back um, in 1995. I don't want to date myself as a trainer, a coach, a developer, and a mentor. Then I moved over to Marriott in the hospitality industry, literally walked in the door, and I was identified as 
okay, you're a trainer. There's something about how you speak. There's something about how you um, interact and engage with others. And they were like, immediately identified me as a trainer and a coach. So I've been training, coaching, developing, mentoring people for 25 years. I love it. There have been so many people that have come into my presence that thought they would never, ever be able to um, develop into director, executives, managers, yeah. business owners. Um and literally by having conversations with them and having them change their internal thoughts, having them to write down things that they want to see uh, come into fruition and having them change that chatter, that inner chatter that they have with themselves has literally launched so many successful lives and careers. And I love doing it. I was, I was thinking about what you were saying 25 years. So were you voted like Miss Congeniality at school in high school? <laughs> I, I, something like that. You know what I mean? Something something similar to that. And, and this is always, if people who really know me, they will tell you, if you're going to be around Karita, you better get ready to be motivated, inspired, uplifted. Don't come in my presence with all that negativity because I ain't having it. <laughs> That's good. That's good. I love it. I love it. Can you talk about the onset, the core of resetability? What are some of the first things or the challenges you see that most people deal with that you have to tackle first before you can change their mindset? Yes, I sure can. Um, most people, and it is just the nature of humans to be negative. So if you study the power of the subconscious mind, the reason why people tend to move or gravitate toward negativity, it's a protection mechanism. So if I don't get too um, excited, I don't put my expectations too high. I don't I don't I don't set myself up for failure. So the average person wants to lean toward protecting themselves with a negative mindset. Mm. No, I don't think that's for me. You know what? I'm OK where I am. You know, I'm not going to venture out to do anything different because I don't know what that's about. I have a, a fear mechanism in me. So most people don't want to push past that. So the first thing that we have to do is we have to change that thought pattern. Um, and one of the first things that I have people do is I have them write down at, and create a personal mission statement for themselves. Secondly, affirmations, affirmations affirmations, affirmations. You know, most people don't even really like themselves. Mm. One of the first affirmations I have people do, I love myself. I like myself. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. You have to know and believe and love who you are first. That's that's one of the first steps. And that's all because some of the negative garbage that's been dumped into people's lives, you know, all of their lives. And sometimes it comes from close um, family members, friends, you know, things like that, where people have made people self-conscious, self low self-esteem. So I got to build that back up. I can do all things through Christ, which strengthens me. You know, I, I, I am wonderfully made. I'm smart. Yes. I'm creative. I'm successful. I'm a winner. I'm an overcomer. I can conquer. You know, I, mm. I start with that. And I tell people, give me 30 days of yes. affirmations. I want you to say them in the morning. And I want you to say them as the last thing you do before you lay down, because the, the subconscious mind works when we are asleep or when we are in relaxed states of mind. So it's very important that the first thing in the morning and the last thing at night that you don't have a lot of garbage going into your mind. And I know people like to watch TV and look at. Yes, that's that. true. And, and, you know, all of that. But they don't understand that those things roll around in your mind all night long. Feed yourself something positive right before you close your eyes. Read the word of God first and foremost. Um, but get you something positive in your mind before you lay down. And the first thing you do when you wake up, have something on your nightstand that you can mm. grab, read. And that's a positive um, mindset um, affirmation type thing. Mm. Um, I love the, the phone for motivation. YouTube. Yes. 
Uh, first thing in the morning, I have my iPad set up in my bathroom and I'm I'm on videos that are feeding my soul. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm listening to the word of God from some of my favorite evangelists and pastors. And then I'm listening to something that's feeding my my mind as far as motivational, inspirational, subconscious. I, I got this one thing I love, the power of the subconscious mind, the power of the subconscious mind. When you train your mind, your subconscious mind, because that's the mind that gets you to do stuff when you're not conscious. And, and, and for instance, I'll give you an example. If you tell yourself, I'm going to work out, I'm going to go to the gym, I'm going to go to the gym. And you may do it for one or two days. And then the third day, you're like, you know what? I don't feel like it. You know what? I don't want to get up early. You know what? I, I'm tired. Because your subconscious mind has not been programmed. It has not been programmed. But if you tell yourself at night, I'm going to the gym in the morning. I don't care. Nothing is going to stop me. And you program yourself every night for the next 30 days. It'll become subconscious. It'll be become innate. It'll become a natural thing where you're like, I'm not missing the gym because it's a part of who I am now. That's what anything. If you're going to develop a business, you tell yourself, I'm going to start this business. I'm going to do the things necessary to get this business going. And you you put it into your subconscious mind. Then you'll get up. You know, I'm going to Google getting a business license. You yeah. know what? I'm going to connect myself with someone who has a business. I'm going to, you know what I mean? You, you, yeah. you, you, yeah. It's in your subconscious. It's in you. I'm, you want to start a spiritual um, connection walk with God. You say, you know what? I'm going to get up and I'm praying every morning. Tell yourself that before you lay down at night. So when you get up first thing in the morning, you get up and pray. And you get up and meditate. Um, it's all about the power of the subconscious mind. I love to say change your thoughts, change your life, change your thoughts and change the trajectory of your life. The resetability. Mm, that's beautiful. What was your turning point in your life to make you focus on this? Like, was there something that we all have a revelation of some of some sort that guides us to our passion and our mission? So what was that for you? For me, um, when I turned 40, I turned 50 this past January, but when I turned 40, I didn't even realize it was my 40th birthday, um, Sylvia. Mm. I was so busy um, with the kids and with their activities and with, you know, family and, and things that were going on. And I have a twin sister. That's another little fun fact about oh. me. But I, oh, I, I didn't twin. know that. I have a twin. <laughs> Yes. And so uh, my twin called me and she said, happy birthday. And I was like, oh, my God. It was our fourth birthday. She was like, girl, what are you doing? I said, I was so wrapped up with the, the kids running this and that. She said, no, ma'am, stop what you're doing. I'm on my way to pick you up. We're going out for lunch. She's like, you're going to take a little bit of time for yourself. That's when I realized I was like, oh, no. Oh, no. I was like, this life is passing me by. People are living and I'm just existing. Come um, on. I have got to change my mindset. So the very uh, next birthday, what I did, Sylvia, I rented a cabin. I invited 10 friends um, to come to the cabin with me. I asked them because my birthday is in January. So it's a lot of um, holidays and things going on. Right. Um, so we were just coming off a New Year's holiday. And, you know, people were still doing vacations and with family and stuff. And I was like, I asked one of my girlfriends, I said, you think if I rent a cabin that people will come? She was like, yeah, we would come. Yeah, that's fun. Overnight. Yeah. <laughs> so I was like, well, I'm going to rent a cabin. She was like, girl, we all coming. So I said, OK, cool. Rented the cabin, we got there, and I was like, y'all, let's do vision boards. You know, because I'm all about not wasting time and just, you know, making sure that it's a product, something product productive is going on. So I, I bought the little boards and everything from like the Dollar Tree. We did vision boards, but the stuff I put on my board, I started walking it out. I said, I want to write a book. I want to publish a book. And I said, I also want to start a prayer ministry. Um, that was another thing that I did. I had a seven year. Um, I did prayer ministry for seven years every day for five days a week. We did Monday through Friday, 530 a.m. Seven years. Didn't miss a day. We prayed. 5.30 a.m. for seven years. And I did five prayer conferences that was birthed out of that visit at the cabin. Mm. My first book was birthed out of that visit at the cabin. 
my mentoring and coaching business was birthed out of that vision, um, that visit and that celebration time at the cabin. So every year my birthday is celebrated in some way, shape or form where I get together with family, friends, we do vision boards and we decide what we are going to accomplish in that year. Oh, so my. that's how it was birthed. Oh my goodness. Yeah. That, that That's powerful because God works in mysterious ways. And your sister was a part of that vessel that mm -hmm. ignite that spirit and passion in you because mm -hmm. had she not called you and said, you need to take some time to yeah. for yourself. And then the next year you plan that that's a powerful story. So let's talk about some of those books that was birthed through that retreat at, where your celebration. Yes. <laughs> the first okay. one I want to talk about is the self-publishing book coaching. Uh, da, 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 da. <laughs> hashtag selfie. Let's talk about oh, that one. Hashtag selfie. Let's talk about that one. Let's that's talk about that one. Baby. That's my first self-published book. Hashtag selfie. And I, I, this book, I, I, I'll tell you. It's the story. First of all, the, the subtitle, take one behind every smile. There's an untold story mm. behind every smile. There's an untold story. So help um, hashtag selfie. Um, I have a compilation compilation of five women's stories. So kind of like how we talked about a turning point in my life. Mm -hmm. It's their stories from where they started to their their journey to their path of success that they're on now amazing, amazing compilation of um, hurt, pain, disappointment, but not letting it um, kill who you were on the inside, but saying, you know what? I am going to make these building blocks. I am going to use those things that happened in my life in the past, and I'm going to build off of those, and I'm going to um, blossom into the amazing person that I know that God designed for me to be. This book, um, and selfie, mm -hmm. another thing, the, the play on the word selfie, most mm -hmm. people, when they take a selfie, they get their cell phones, and they want to do, like, you know, angles. Yeah, yeah, you got it, yeah. So... Our selfies were taken with pins. And so they were an internal reflection of what happened in our lives and how we use them to build to where we are now. So I tell everybody for two reasons, take a selfie. Once you write everything down and understand the journey that God has brought you through, no one can use it to shame you. They can't use your past to condemn. Ooh, I got to write this down. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Yes. I love that. Say that again. I'm getting my I'm getting my post it. Yes. It is not to shame you. No one say that statement again first. Say, when, when you when you write down your past, they can't use it to shame you. They can't use it to condemn you. Mm. You come yourself. You forgive yourself for all that happened in your past and you're able to move forward with success because people will bring your past up to try to haunt you. But what I did, Sylvia, I put my past in here. You guys can read it for yourself. And I know I'm not what I used to be. I know that I don't look like what I've been through. Oh my and God. I know that those things mm. will never, ever come back to haunt me. So if you want to know something about my past, because I'm not perfect, you can read it in hashtag selfie and you'll never, ever, ever, ever be able to come back and hold that over my head, baby. No guilt, no shame, no condemnation. That's what we have done when we write our selfies with our pens. Karina, yeah. what is that confidence? I love it. That I mean, you exude confidence through this. You exuding it through this screen. It's like jumping off on me <laughs> because you are secure in your past and you know what it is, and you you self published it. <laughs> I published it. It is what it is, and it is in the past. You know, there's a verse in the Bible: "All things are passed away, but behold." All things become new. We are new creatures in Christ. You can't hold it against me, baby. I'm done with that. I'm on to a new chapter. Ah, I love it. I <laughs> love it. Tell everyone real quick. We're not wrapping up anything, but just tell everybody real quick. Where can they um, purchase hashtag selfie? 
They can purchase it on my website, resetabilitywithkarita.com. So I guess I have to send it to you so we can pin it somewhere. Yes. Um, but it's resetabilitywithkarita.com. Awesome. 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 Oh, I love it. I love it. <laughs> um, let me see. Do you think people take too many selfies? Um, I don't in think the, we can do too much selfies. In the digital Are you state. talking about the literal with the phone? Yes, yes, yes. I love to see women like being confident in who they are, confident in their skin, not allow people to shame them. So I love the fact that they celebrate themselves through a selfie. I love the fact that they enjoy the person that God created them to be. I love seeing all the selfies that people <laughs> post because it was a time where, where, you know, especially women, you know, we were taught to kind of be in the background. You yeah. know what I mean? Don't do too much in public. Yeah. And, you know, the man is supposed yeah. to be out front and you'll be behind. And so women taking selfies to me, I, I think that's a beautiful thing. Go ahead and celebrate who you are. You are beautiful. <laughs> you are beautiful all in one. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about your faith journey. What does faith mean to you? Faith to me is doing the thing that God told you to do until you see it come into fruition. Um, faith, like they say, faith the size of a mustard seed. My, to me, faith is not throwing in the towel, not giving up, not quitting, not caving in. Faith is like, I'm going to do it until I can't do it anymore. And I know that once I have put my faith in place, everything else, God will take care of the rest. Yes. I don't yeah. have to know about the how. I just need to know why and put my faith on the field. One, my, my pastor, Pastor Dollar, say, put your faith on the field and leave it there. Just leave it there. Um, and uh, when he told um, Peter, you know, oh, oh, ye of little faith, when it was time to walk on water, he did a, a couple steps and then began to, you know, see because. His faith wasn't long lasting. Mm. It was short. It was just but for a moment. But we can't have but for a moment faith. We got to have a long lasting faith. Yes. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. <laughs> oh, you are so amazing. <laughs> so amazing. I want to know when is your next speaking engagement? Everyone needs to know that because y'all need to sign up register do whatever you need to do to go support her they need to register they need to register for the resetability conference it is going to be president's day weekend february 19th and 20th 22 and we are going to be on a um resort uh, on the north side of georgia everything is going to be on that resort it's going to be on a lake we're going to have um personal chefs we're going to have speakers and trainers come in. We're going to take a boat ride to a private dinner. We're going to have entertainment. It's an all-inclusive package. The Resetability Conference. The link is on my website, and I can send it to you um, as well, Miss Sylvia. Yes, please. We are going to be transforming lives. President's Day weekend, February 19th and 20th of 22. Oh, that is amazing, guys. You all do not want to miss that. All of us need to go enjoy and re kicking off. Oh, that's a part of 2022 to reset our life, getting ready for another year. Oh, that's amazing. I, I love it. I love it. All right. Let's talk about the 30 days of inspiration for sales professionals. And I, I specifically want you to discuss, you said you had this for sale professionals or those people who are in the business of selling products elaborate on that for us okay i sure will so this particular book the 30 days of inspiration for sales professionals this book was birthed out of the pandemic um so um at the top of the pandemic around march april um, a lot of people who are salespeople in the industry that i am in found themselves without employment they found themselves without a purpose because they had done this, you know, for so many years. They found themselves kind of in a hopeless situation. And me just sitting there, I was like, I got to do something. I just heard like nothing but defeat. I heard so much negativity. I heard so much just 
despondency and I said, I got to do something for them. So I put together this 30 days of inspiration, Hmm. 30 affirmations that I have used throughout my career uh, because nothing just happens. And um, it also gives them a snippet of how I use these in my career. So for instance, the very first day is I'm ambitious, having a strong desire for success. I am ambitious is the first affirmation in this book. And it says, I can't stress to you enough the importance of a salesperson possessing ambition. If you don't believe that you will be successful, if you don't believe that the goal is achievable, why bother? You have to want success to win in this business. Mm -hmm. So that's just an example. And it's 30 of those in this book. It was designed to help people change their mindset in, um, a time in our lives where it was, you know, it was very tragic. Yes. A lot of people didn't know what was next. Um, so much uncertainty. I want to let them know that they could still hold on to things that are important to them. They could still stick with their um, affirmations and believing that the goals that they still want to achieve in life are still attainable. It's not over. Um, it's unfortunate that we are in a pandemic, but I know that things are going to reset and that things are going to turn around for the good. And I know that, you know, in the end, we, we win all things, all things, all things work together for the good of them who love the Lord and who are the call according to his purpose. Um, so that was birth out of, but what I realized after I wrote it is that everybody is a sales professional. You don't have to be in the particular industry of sales, but mm-hmm. you're selling something. You're selling something, Sylvia, here with your um, with your program. You want to sell the audience to click and to watch. So you you have to sell an idea to um, a, a boss or, a, you know, a mentor, a company. If you're an entrepreneur, you're selling. Even wives have to sell sometimes to their families. You know, you got to sell them on an idea of your kids of of cleaning a room. Sell your husband on the idea of that new furniture you want. You know what I mean? Everybody is selling something. Everybody is a sales professional. And this book can be used and will bring substance to anybody's life. Mm. I, I, I'm with, as you're speaking, I'm just like in awe because that's why I wanted that question was it specifically just for people who are in the sales profession, but on the the general, well, the, the normal person, this book is for you as well. Yeah. Like, you know, you mentioned the mother and I love like, cause you got to convince your child, you got to sell them to, yes, you should clean up your, your room. You have to sell them on it, don't you? Right, you have to sell them on it. Everybody needs this book. They can all go get it at Carita Resetability.com, right? Resetability with Carita.com. You can get this book. Okay, we get, then we get that in the comment section. We got we got to put that in the comment section. We got 30 it. Day. I love it. I love it. I love it. Now I want you to share for the people because you've been doing it throughout, but three inspirational nuggets for our viewers that, that they can hold on to every day to reset they can be a part if it's one of your favorite affirmations share with us three inspirational nuggets that help you reset your life every day okay the first thing i would do is have a spirit of gratitude the first nugget be Mm. thankful for your life be thankful for everything that has happened every opportunity because when you have a spirit of gratitude you can weed out the negative and you can focus in on the positive I would have everybody to write a list of all the blessings that you have in your life Mm. and go down each one of those things that you've written down and say, I'm thankful for it. I'm thankful today that I'm alive and well. I'm thankful today that I have a roof over my head. I'm thankful today that I do have a means to make a living and I'm not on the street. I'm thankful today that I had clothes to put on, that I have food in the refrigerator. I'm thankful that we're not in the hospital, that we we are healthy and whole. You know, just write a list of gratitude that you're thankful for. That That's number one. Um, number two, I would say 
love yourself, mm -hmm. take some time out for self-care and to reset. Take some time out to be with yourself so that you can gather your thoughts. I like to wake up about 30 minutes earlier than everybody else in the household so I can have that time to meditate, to pray, to reset, to get myself together before my day gets busy. Um, I, I have a lot going on during the day, but I want I, I like that 30 minutes. Give yourself 30 minutes at the top of your day or 30 minutes at the end of your day where you can just reset your thoughts, where you can just spend some time meditating and praying and, and writing down and revisiting your goals. Um, so that would be number two. And number three, I would say laugh a little, <laughs> laugh, lighten up. Laughter is food and medicine for the soul. <laughs> Get you somewhere where you can have a good belly rinse and laugh. It's okay. I think people take life so seriously sometimes mm -hmm. and they don't take the time to laugh and smile and enjoy. It's okay. Everything doesn't have to be so heavy. Take some a moment out and just laugh. Those would be my three nuggets. Oh, those are beautiful. Those are, I, I love all of them, but that is, I, I really want to expound on the third one. Yeah, time to laugh, and when you said, "Don't be so heavy," because that's true. I think everyone, especially with COVID, everyone is walking around on eggshells, or you know, they just don't know what the outcome. So, for you going through this journey, which one of those nuggets that you shared? It's the one that you know during this COVID season that you've had to internally hold on to. Um, I would say the laughter part. I, I would say, you know, taking time, like you said, to laugh, to smile, to enjoy. My husband and I started something during the pandemic called the Backyard Party because all of the restaurants were closed. You know, we really couldn't have our little date nights that we were having on Friday nights. So we started doing it in the backyard. Now, we've been in our home five years, Sylvia. I had never spent time in my backyard on my back patio, in my patio <laughs> furniture in five years it, until the pandemic happened. Had never spent any time out there. We made it such a thing that people were on um, social media like, when y'all going to invite us to the backyard party? But, you know, it was pandemic. We weren't inviting people to the house. But right. me, my husband and my children every weekend got out there with our speaker and we cooked out and we had a party in the backyard. And guess what? We danced and we laughed and we played games. And I bought a screen with the projector and we watched yeah. movies in the backyard. And you know what? That was food for the soul. So I would say, if you don't take anything else away, life is too short. Laugh a little, live a little, enjoy this journey and don't make everything so heavy. The heavy things will take care of themselves. God will take care of that. But you've got to be intentional mm. about your feeling good and laughing and just enjoying life. Be intentional about it. Mm. I'm writing all this down. <laughs> I'm writing all, oh my God, you are feeding my soul this evening. I want to know who has fed your soul. Who were the people in your life that have inspired you, they were influenced, that motivated you, encourages, that said, Corita, you can do this. Mm -hmm. Whatever you want to do that, you know, that helps you through this journey, because we all have coaches in our life. So yes, who would that be for you? My very first coach, of course, as um, any child would probably say, my mother was my very first coach. My mother was very inspirational in making sure that my siblings and I had self-confidence. Um, and she was a big part of me uh, wanting to write and, and be a part of self-publishing books. So a little tidbit, my mother was a 30-year librarian for the system that <laughs> I, I, I was a media specialist for 20 years. Yes. So oh. she was the public library in the county that I grew up in, Sarasota County, 30 years she was a librarian. But she was a pioneer to have a public library in the um, Black community. So um, her first initial thing was she started with a um, van that was a, a mobile library. Mobile that library. She drove it around in the community. Oh. Everybody knew 
as the mobile librarian. Um, and they call it the bookmobile. So she drove the bookmobile. That was the first step. Then they allowed her to do a storefront, like a, um, a a miniature library that had, you know, just a portion of the books that they had at the big main public library. She did a storefront. That storefront stayed up. I mean, this is, I'm talking about in the 80s that she did the storefront. They had the Dewey Decimal System, and, you know, yes. books that were donated, all that kind of stuff. So she that lasted for about maybe five, six, seven years. But October of 2019... They um, actually renamed a full-blown public library that was built in the Black community after my mom. That's the awesome. Betty J. Johnson North Sarasota Public Library. It was unveiled, the sign, her picture, everything in 2019. She got to see it with her own eyes. All of us were there. All of her children were there. Family um, surrounded her. Um, but there is a library named after my mother, my that's first beautiful. mentor and coach. Oh, that's, my, beautiful. <laughs> that's beautiful. Yes. Yes. And then secondly, um, I, I have actually, I, I hired a mentor and coach as well. Her name is J Jaquel Tucker. And her whole thing is um, purpose on fire. So her whole thing is develop, de I'm sorry, define your purpose and do it like it's on fire. Um, have you ever heard Ooh. the term um, burn the ship? Burn the ship happened like in colonial times when they were um, um, actually developing uh, what we call America and the United States mm -hmm. today. But mm -hmm. when they were... Um, go to an area that they were going to start developing into colonies, they would send people over in ships That's and right. they were going to be the initial um, citizens of that area. Yes. But once they got on land, they would burn the ship so they couldn't go back. They couldn't retreat back. So this whole purpose on fire is, is once you start working on your purpose, we not turning around and going back. It is on fire. We have burned the ship. Wait a minute. I am preaching tonight. <laughs> oh my God. Accountability. <laughs> Burn the ship. I've never thought about it like that. Burn I think I taught ship. that in third grade when I taught. I think I, that was in a third grade lesson. Uh -huh. but, um, about the you know the colonies going over the ship. That's they burned the ship so they could not go back. You ain't going back. You ain't turning around. You ain't going to retreat. You ain't going to cave in. Quit. We going forward on this mission and purpose. Burn the ship mentality. That's what you got to have with your goals, your dreams. You got to burn the ship. He was like, I'm doing it at all costs because I can't go back. Because guess what? How I came over here is no longer available. So I got to go forward so I can get to my next destination. Oh, okay. Why do you think, oh, this is just so good. This is so many people who I'm thinking about who I know has all these purposes in life and things that they need to do. They, I, oh, they got to I like everybody like, comment, share, and pass this interview on. This is amazing. I want to ask you with the people that you have been working with and had an opportunity to speak to, what are those elements that keeps them from burning the ship? They burn it, but they go back. They go right. I got I, I have oh my gosh. So I'm a book coach. So I one of my clients um Ooh. wrote her book, and that was the one, My Faith Journey. Mm -hmm. Um, I helped her self-publish her book. She wrote her book from the hospital ICU bed. So when I tell you, if she was able to finish her book from the hospital ICU bed, she had to burn the ship mentality. She reached out to me and she was like, they have put me in hospice. They put her in hospice three different times. She was like, currently I'm in ICU. She said, well, God told me to write a book about my wellness journey. She was like, I'm coming out of here. I'm coming out of the hospital. Sylvia. She could barely talk because of all the tubes that were connected to her. I said, this is what I want you to do. I said, I know you can't sit up. I know you can't type. I said, I want you to use your phone as a recording device. And you are going to speak into that device. And let's start writing your book. So she would send me voice memos. And we would get them transcribed for her. We did that over and over until we got the body, the content, the manuscript written. Um, she was like, I, I can't physically take a picture right now. I was like, just send me a picture. We, we got a picture. We did her front cover, her back cover, her sales copy, her spine. Her, we published the book. I thought, me, 
being the human that I am, that she wasn't going to make it to her 50th birthday, which was last year, November 1st of 2020. So I rushed to get her book published. She got the book in her hand and we had her book release party two weeks ago where she was up alive, well, walked across the stage and introduced her own book three weeks ago. So when I tell you about burn the ship mentality, that's what I mean at all costs. When you have a purpose on fire mentality, there is nothing that can stop you. There is not a devil in hell, excuse me, that can stop you from living the life and the dream that God has designed for you to live. Okay, you just got chills going all through my body. I know. I, that's goosebumps. Yeah. Do you see my goosebumps through the screen? Yeah, I do. I'm trying to stop oh, myself from not crying and, and have tears down my face because that's, yeah. Yeah, Sylvia. Th that, that's what I do. That's my mission and purpose. I was born on this earth to uplift, inspire, and motivate others to pursue their goals and dreams. That's what I do. That's what the resetability effect is. Yeah. <laughs> yes. I, I, I'm speechless. I'm... <laughs> oh, my goodness. Before I ask you about your biggest dream, what advice do you have for the underdog? Yes, the underdog, the underdog. I, I love the underdog. I love the person that they counted out. I love the person that they thought weren't going to make it. Because I too, at one point, um, Sylvia was an underdog. So I talk about this in my book. I got pregnant my senior year in college. Um, and my family, and I'm a twin. So I got a twin sister that's on the right trajectory. She's successful. She's taking her career in education. You know, she's a successful principal now. So I got, everybody was like, um, look at her. And then I had me, the other twin, I'm pregnant in college, got pregnant at the end of my junior year. So they literally, and this is just them being human, you know, I yeah. kind of thought, oh, she, she'll never make it. Oh, you can go ahead and count her out. You know, you might as well pack it up, come home, look, come home and, and just figure out how you're going to work and do nothing. But God came to me in a vision before my um, daughter was born and he showed me my trajectory. So as the underdog, I, I went back to college when my daughter was three weeks old, three weeks old. I, I knew that I was going to finish. I was like, I'm going to finish and I'm going to finish with honors. Didn't have a baby, didn't have daycare lined up. Didn't know what I was going to do with daycare. But someone that told me about a daycare provider, I went to her and she said, I have a wait list. But I told myself, you're going to do this. You're going to finish. You, they have counted you out. And I, I, I self-taught my way through it. I was like, God will never leave you nor forsake you. You can do this. You can do this. Yes. Before um, I returned, about three days before it was time for me to return back on college, um, Florida A&M University, I'm a Rattler, uh, she, called, she figured out a way to get in touch with me at my grandmother's house. And she said, I know I told you I had a wait list, but. God told me to have your baby to come on. I'm going to put her in. I'm going to I'm going to put you past. Ooh. Not only that, I have a private donor, a doctor. They don't want um, to be known, but it's a private donor. They're going to pay for the first six weeks of her daycare tuition. So you don't have to worry about that either. You don't have to know how. You just need to know the why. And then you trust God. Trust God for the work, the rest. And I, I, one thing, underdog, underdog, listen to me, a prayer that I want you to pray, Lord, order my footsteps, lead and guide me in the way that you would have me to go and, 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 and let, let the rest fall into place, block out the haters, turn the noise down is what I like to say. Turn the noise down. If it's not feeding your soul, cut them off. And then you connect yourself to people who are going where you want to go. Align yourself with people who are going where you want to go. Network. Um, and, and the um, Think and Grow Rich, he talks about the mastermind alliances that we make in life. You need to connect yourself with someone who can um, keep you accountable mm -hmm. and to help mentor and guide you to where you want to go. It's okay to ask for help. It's okay to get a mentor. It's okay to get a coach. And it's okay to move yourself out of the circle of people that you are in and form a new circle. 
It's absolutely okay. I'm not mad with you. I'm not upset with you. I don't hate you. But where I'm going in my life, I can't have you occupy my space any longer. I have to have people who have the same mindset occupy the space that I am. Align yourself with people who are going where you are going. And that's my advice for the underdog. That's that's just I when you were speaking, I saw you in the arena with women pouring into them. It, 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 you got you got to touch them. You, you got talking them. about my dream? Yes, that that's my ultimate dream. Well, let's get to it. Let me bring out the dream pillar. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> what I want you to dream big. You doing it? I, this is this is a part of my mantra. Is to encourage people to live out their dream because I, um, in my testimony, I did not want to go to college. I wanted to go to straight to Hollywood. That was my dream to be a singer and an actress. But my mother said no, which which is fine. <laughs> so I'm dream. I'm living my dream now, singing and acting. Uh, so what is your biggest dream? Very similar. I, I want to see myself on the big screen. I tell myself, it's written out in my journal. I say season regular actor on a major network for a TV series pilot, uh, a, 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 um, a streaming show, Netflix, whatever. I'm going to be a season regular. I wanted to act as well, Sylvia. So we got a, a similar background. I went to a performing arts high school. Um I, I was in the performing arts program for ninth and 10th grade. And then my mom pulled me out, similar to you. Um, because they couldn't see the, the future. You know, they couldn't see right. and they were like, that's not going to be a career right. that's going to sustain you. Yes. And so I went to business school. Um, but my ultimate goal is to see myself on the big screen. But I also want to uplift and inspire women. So I will be in an arena full of 20,000 people. And I'll be on the stage speaking life into those women, men, children, business owners. I will be in big arenas. Oh, my God. This, yeah. this is... Oh, this is just too much, Karina. It's too much. (laughs) An hour is not enough for you. I know. (laughs) Because, you know, I could go on and on. I hadn't even looked at the time once. I was like, we got some more time. We got some more time. Yeah. (laughs) But what came to my mind when you said similar, why do you think, and I I, I think I know the reason, but I want to hear your um, position on this. Why do you think in our black culture, I'm going to say specifically, the mothers are the fathers. When a child does come forth and say, I want to do this instead of go straight to school. What do you think that mentality is for our parents or part of that generation? Because they, like you said, they can't see that. Now, just imagine had we gone to Hollywood 30 years ago. Right. What would I what would our life be today? We don't know. We're grateful and thankful for what we have. But I just want to hear your thoughts on that, the position in the black culture with parents, older generation parents. Why were they afraid to allow us to venture out and go live our true dreams instead mm-hmm. of the traditional tell us to go to traditional school way? Right. Go to college. I think I really think it's programming. So they 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 were programmed to um, go to school, work, pay you know pay for a house, you know do do the traditional stuff. Mm-hmm. So work 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 retire and you know sit home. Work 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 work. That, that's just how they were they were programmed. You work yeah. 30, 40 years on the job, you retire, and then you just sit there and you know and and just live out your retirement. That's how they were were programmed. Um, we didn't have a lot of wealth. So I think that the 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 fear of being um, impoverished, the fear of poverty, you know, if you do something like that, that's not stable. That's not, there's no stability in that. Uh-oh, take yourself out of you. I got oh, don't do my, the, oh, we got to hear everything. <laughs> <laughs> but there was a lot. So the, the fear of poverty, I believe, had a lot to do with it. Because when you live in a house where there is is resources, you tend to have more freedom, more creativity, more of um, allowing children to kind of find themselves. 
But when you live in a household where there is a lack of resources or not as much um, of, of the money and the wealth, you tend to have a more strict, a more normalized um, trajectory that you put on your children. Mm -hmm. I didn't do that with my children. I allowed them to live their dreams. And I remember I said something because one of my coworkers was like, why are you letting um, your daughter do all that stuff, all that singing, dance in Hollywood? What? There's no future in it. And I turned around and I told her, I said, don't project your mediocrity on my child who is a super natural being. Don't project your mediocrity on my on my child. Cause that's your mindset. That's not, that's not where she's going. Don't project your mediocrity over here. And I think that's our parents just trying to protect us felt like if we could just do something more average, something more regular, something more normal, we could have a steady standard life, but that's not what God is about. God is about faith. God is about trusting and believing and to say, we walk by faith and not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. So they, they, although they were in church, you know, two, three times a day on a Sunday, did they actually believe what they were reading that we walk by faith and not by sight? It's not faith if I can see it. I don't need faith to see a nine to five and a check coming in every week. I don't need faith for that, but I need faith to go to Hollywood and not have a job, not have been uh, cast in something big, not have, you know, a signed right. deal with something major. I need faith to do that. But I look at the people that I hear their stories where they just say, I just pack everything and I win. Yes. And a lot of them are not in the church. But the, the principle, the universal principle is the same. They had faith that to believe that I don't have to see it to know that it's real. I don't have to see it to know that I can have it. I don't have to have it right in my hand. I know that there's something on the inside of me that says I am going to make it. So a lot of times we put um, the shackles and the, the chains and the prisons, we build them for ourselves by not having enough faith to live out our dreams. Ooh, ooh, that's good stuff. Mm -hmm. That is good stuff. Mm -hmm. Also true. Also true. So that leads me to almost to our final question. Yes. Why is mentoring so important? Mentors and important. I, I use professional sports for um, as a, as a reference. So you got people who are at the highest level of their game, right? Whether it's professional basketball, professional baseball, professional football, there are they are at the highest level of their game, but there is still a coach. There is still someone there that is pushing them. There is still someone there to say, you know what? You kind of didn't dribble the ball just right. You know what? You stepped outside of the line a little bit. Yes. You know what? I need you to push yourself a little bit harder on, on this drill and, and do a little bit more on that drill. If you don't have a mentor and coach, there is no one there to say, hey, you can do a little bit more than what you're doing. There's no one there to say, hey, great job. Let's see more of that. There's no one there to say, hey, you, you, you went a little bit outside of the lines. Let's reel it back in. You know what I mean? That's what a mentoring coach does because you can't self-medicate yourself. Like if you're a doctor or physician, you don't diagnose yourself and you don't self-medicate yourself. You go to another doctor and physician for that. Um, professional athletes don't coach themselves. There's a coach there that's paid yes. to do that. So we as regular, um, not regular, but we as yes. human beings that are trying to get to the next level, why in the world wouldn't you hire a mentor and a coach that is going to help push you over into the next level, push you to your next um, um, trajectory, your next goal, your next notch, your next step. That's what a mentor and a coach is for. So that you have someone there outside of yourself to hold you accountable. Someone there outside of yourself to help guide and lead you. Someone to offer, you know, some assistance to you when you're trying to get to the next level. That's why you hire a mentor and a coach. Final question of the hour. What is your biggest reward you feel from all of your gifts? My biggest reward is when I see the success 
in someone else. When I see them accomplish, see them achieve, see that they reached a level of success that we've been talking about, that we started out as just a thought when we wrote it down in our initial session, and then we saw them start to take action toward it. And then we actually see them achieve the goal that they came um, uh, looking to achieve. That's the highest level of gratitude for me. I love rooting people on. I love seeing people win. I love seeing people accomplish the things that they have sought to accomplish. And it, bring, it brings me great joy um, to see people win. And, and th that to me, that is the biggest reward. That is the biggest reward. Oh! This has been amazing. Thank you. Is there anything you want to share that I may not have touched on before we close out? Because this is just awesome, guys. You all need everybody need to sign up for that retreat. Please, please sign up for retreat. But you can follow me on all social media platforms under my name, Carita Montgomery. C-A-R-I-T-A. -A, last name is Montgomery, like the city. I am on LinkedIn, Instagram, Facebook, all up under that name, Carita Montgomery. My website is resetabilitywithcarita.com. Pick up my books, y'all. Um, they're available on my yeah. website. Yeah. Um, they're also available on Amazon.com uh, if you choose to go there. But pick up my books and 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 pray without ceasing. Pray every day. It's okay. Pray without ceasing and just know the best is yet to come. Oh, I thank you. Now, you stay right there. Don't go away. I'm going to pull you out for one second. Oh, God, listen, my little post-it notes over here, guys, is just, look, at. she was speaking to me. Corita was speaking to me, and I know she was speaking to you. All the thing I got to say is next week, I want you to reset. I want you to go get one of those books, hashtag selfie, or the 30 days of inspiration. Uh, this, I, I'm just speaking, you know. I'm not a loss of words most of the time. I usually know what to say at the end of a show, but I am just like floored because she is speaking to me. And, and I know so many women out there, men and men as well, that you have some things that you have, you put them on the shelf. You need to go reset your life. Go reset your life. I love you guys. Don't forget to like, comment, share. And I see you the same time, same place next Sunday on Sunday Night Live. Thank you for tuning in. I'll see you next week.